When I tell a lie, I know it. When I have a lustful thought, I know it. When I lose my cool and I let my sinful anger flare, I know that too. But there's a sneaky sin that can oftentimes go unnoticed. That's what makes it so dangerous. Um, and this sin can damage our relationship with God and others. And it hides in plain sight. That's the problem. I'm talking about pride, the father of all sins, and the very reason that Satan himself became God's enemy. Pride. Pride is unique because when I'm proud, I don't know it. When I'm proud, I actually think I'm right. When I'm proud, I'm proud of it. <laughs> right? How backwards is that? I actually think I have it all together when I don't. That's the problem with pride. Now, Proverbs is a book of the Bible that's filled with all kinds of timeless wisdom. And uh, in Proverbs, it tells us in a verse that you're probably familiar with, it says, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride goes before a fall. Now, I've, I've got a personal story that kind of proves that verse to me. I don't know if you oftentimes hear a Bible verse and you're like, is that true? Sometimes life proves to you that the Bible is true. Um, so when I was a kid, I grew up playing uh, baseball on the fields of North Royalton. And, uh, and so this one particular game, I hit this ground ball and it gets past the infield, it gets past all the outfielders, it gets all the way to the fence. And so I'm running as fast as I can around first, second, third base, uh, my, as fast as my little legs can carry me. But when I pass third and I start heading for home, I start to slow into a little trot. You guys can all probably kind of see where this is heading. <laughs> all the parents in the stands could see it too. Um, the third baseman had gotten the ball, and I didn't know this. So I'm slowing down even more as I'm nearing home. And he's speeding up behind me. I don't know this is happening. So about five steps from home plate, I don't trip, I, I don't fall, but I raise my hands in victory. <laughs> Two steps from home plate, third baseman tags me in the middle of the back, out, with my hands still in the air, a step from the plate. That is pride. I hope that that can just be a lasting mental picture for you guys when you want to think about pride. Think about pride, hands up in victory, out a step from home. Um, but now that's just a little humorous story from my childhood. Um, but where does pride show up in my life today? Uh, and where does it do damage in my life today? Well, when I am in an argument with my wife, and I don't shut up long enough to hear her point and understand how I've made her feel because I'm convinced I'm right, that's pride. Uh, when I don't even try to understand why somebody might have a different political view than me, that's pride. Uh, when I talk about people behind their back and I think I would never do the things that this person does, that's pride. Now, when I forget and I live like the Son of God didn't die to save me, that's pride. That's the ultimate pride. And pride kills. Because like we said, pride doesn't just affect our human relationships. It can stain our relationship with God. So near the end of Jesus' ministry, he told a story to some people who were trusting in their own righteousness, trusting in their own goodness, their own morality, their own virtue to get them right with God. So he tells this story. He says, two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. Again, it's important to remember the Pharisee was a religious leader of that time, and the tax collector was not a popular figure. You know, it could be a megachurch pastor and an IRS agent or something today. You know, that'd be kind of the two main characters. Um, so Jesus goes on to say, he says, the Pharisee standing by himself prayed like this. 
God, thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. He's pointing out the guy right there. I fast twice a week. I give tithes on everything that I get. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift his eyes up to heaven, but he beat his breast and he said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Jesus goes on to say, I tell you that this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Notice, being exalted isn't necessarily bad, but it's only when we're humbled that God does the exalting for us. So in this story, Jesus teaches that we're never more spiritually strong than those times that we admit our weakness to God. Elsewhere, Jesus said, healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. I have not come to call those who think they're righteous, but those who, are, who know that they're sinners and that they need to repent. So Jesus, God in human flesh, has come, and he came humbly, born not in a palace but in a smelly stable. He died a painful death on the cross. His, brought, his body was broken for us. His blood was poured out for the forgiveness of our sins. But he didn't stay dead. He rose, and he now offers us his mercy, his grace. But we must humble ourselves to receive this gift. You can't receive this gift in pride. So let's always remember to pray a prayer that I believe God always hears. And it's the prayer of the hated tax collector. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And then... We can lift our hands, but not in pride, but in praise to the God who saves.